All right, hey guys, uh, I had to make part two because my camera ran out of ran out of space. Used up all the memory card with that one video, so I got to do part two here. So anyway, I was talking about how you're going to have the vampires against the government, the government against you, the vampires against you. Everybody is against everybody. So it's basically just a big, huge free-for-all, just like an infamous one, except you got four groups this time. Which basically, you have four groups in, in uh, infamous two. Wait, did I... If I, if I say something that confuses you guys or doesn't make sense, it's probably because I'm really tired. So I'm going to correct myself, even if I didn't say anything wrong. You're going to have a big free-for-all, just like an in Infamous 1. You're going to have four groups, like you did in Infamous 2. So we're going to have everybody against everybody. So it's a big team free-for-all. And basically what this does is it gives you a lot of options especially in the story mode you can either you can team up with anybody you want so there's going to be branching storylines not necessarily just two storylines i think it's time we expanded the infamous universe and tried out some new things we've always had choices to make we've had good or bad a or b simple cut out straight choices but I think to expand the game and make it more versatile and increase um, replayability, we need to have a more branching storyline. Sort of like the Mass Effect series. Not, not as hardcore though. I never liked Mass Effect because there was too many choices to make and there was too many different outcomes that you could have. I don't want that to happen to, to Infamous. I don't want them to give you six different choices you can choose from and then have to play through the game ten times to get everything it has to offer. I, I, I honestly, it would be, it'd be nice, but it'd be really annoying at the same time. So what I think we need to do is we need to have a story that branches off in each group's direction. So you can join whatever group you want. You join the vampires, you join the first sons, you can join um, the government, you can join the rebels, you can join whatever you want. And we're going to have different storylines for each group. I mean, the, the story is going to be under the same basis, but there's going to be like different cutscenes, different outcomes for the, what choices you make. So, for example, if you start out the game, and obviously when you start the game, you're going to be on, on, on the same level, all on the same page. It's after you get about eight or nine missions into the game after you start unlocking and figuring out all these different groups then we're gonna start to get really really into the choices in the branching storyline and why I want to in introduce the groups so quick in, in the game is because in Infamous 2 I realized this by the time you had unlocked all the groups, like all the enemies and all the the places to run around in, you didn't really have that much time to do anything. The story was basically over before you knew it. And the only thing left to do was side missions and UGC missions that were created by people that did not know how to use the UGC tool, that sucked at making missions, and it just wasn't really fun. So. I think we should introduce two groups within the first couple of missions. And I, when I say the first couple, I mean the first seven to eight missions. We need to have at least two groups opened up. We should have the vampires right off the bat. They need to be a group. But to start the game off, we need the first sons. So we're going to open up the game. It's going to be kind of what I explained last time. Cole's going to wake up. He's going he's gonna to not know what's going on. Um, he's going to be wondering if Infamous 2 was just a dream, all this kind of stuff, but then things start happening quickly, really quickly, things start to start to happen that, that, that make him think. Uh, his powers come back. All the powers he got in Infamous 2 just start coming to him. As you're fighting all these enemies, which would be the first sons, I, I mean, you, you're thrown into the battle. I mean, it's just like I said, you wake up, there's a cutscene, Trish and Zeke are there, uh, you don't know what's going on. You have a you don't know if everything that you just went through in the past past couple games was an experience, a dream, or whatever. And then Kessler's watching you. And then before you know it, there's like an explosion or something. Zeke comes running in. 
and you get thrown straight into the action. And so you're out there fighting the first sons, and obviously you, you don't know who it is yet. You got no, you got no clue. I mean, you just woke up from basically what you think was a coma. So you got no clue what's going on. You don't know who you're fighting. You just know that Zeke says you ought to kick their ass. So of course, listen to Zeke. He's awesome. You kick their ass, <laughs> and then, and then you start to unravel the story a little bit more. Halfway through this first mission, this opening mission, you're going to have the vampires jump in and try to try to ha have in a mid-mission in the middle of of the blue battle with the first sons. And you're just going to be stuck in the middle of it. Obviously, the vampires and the first sons aren't going to be targeting you specifically. The first sons are going to be shooting at you and, and all this stuff, but they're but the vampires are not going to be targeting you yet. You are, are fighting both the groups. You make it through the mission. You know you you clear out a couple streets. The town is a shithole. It's it's a complete wreck. Uh, and you're you're running through. And you have no idea what's going on. Like I said earlier, you're just thrown into it all. And. So at the end of this mission, we, we need to have you running around, shooting the first suns, you make it through, you get past, you know, whatever, something, and Kessler jumps out of nowhere, you know, he does this weird teleporting thing, jumps out of nowhere, says something pretty, says something awesome to Cole, I don't know, something like, something to the effect of that he's back, you know, just some, some quick two second thing that you see in a horror movie, just like, guess who and then knocks him out and takes him hostage so then we have Cole waking up in the middle of a first son's facility has no clue what's going on Kessler walks in the room he explains a couple things to Cole and then they let their doctors do some experimenting with him and so then this whole story is going to evolve around whether or not Infamous 2 and Infamous 1 for that matter was even real or if it was just all you know a uh, let's just call it a hallucination just for simple facts don't want to get too in detail with this yet so I think that's how we should go about it and then at the end of the game obviously you find out that it was true everything happened everything did happen um, like I said, I have no direct storyline or plot or script, anything written out for this yet that I can I can go off of. Right now, I'm just basically point and shoot guessing on what should happen. I mean, I I have a very plain, straightforward sight about it, but you know, that's as far as I know. So that's it for now. I'll probably expand on this idea later in some some other updates. But that's it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching, and leave your ideas in the comments, and I'll see you next time.